Brittany Tiger mysteriously disappeared from her room and the person closest to her isn't looking for her. How on earth is that happening? Well, I hope you'll listen to this episode with Vinnie Politan of Court TV tonight as we explore Brittany Tiger, an indigenous woman who disappeared from her home in the middle of the night. How on earth does something like this happen and the immediate family has to be the one to start looking, not her spouse? This is an interesting one. Stay tuned. It's time to open up tonight's unsolved case file, and this is your opportunity to help. If you have any information, the phone numbers will be up. Please pick up the phone and make the call. Uh, tonight, it's the story of Brittany Tiger, who was murdered back in 2018. Rochelle Aline from our great affiliate WFTS has her story. These families are hoping to raise awareness by turning their pain into a story. And a Tampa area private investigator is helping them along the way. We feel for her. We feel for that family because we know what it's like to have a missing person. For Jessica Tyson, Gabby Petito's case is a reminder of loss. She was just this uh, ball of energy. Her sister, Brittany Tiger, went missing on February 11th, 2018. That was the last time she, anybody had heard from her. Weeks later, her body was found dumped in a wooded area in Oklahoma. But unlike Gabby's case, Tyson says her sister's has dragged on for three and a half years with little progress. I feel honestly that they have, Ada police could have done better. They could have looked into it a lot better. The Urban Indian Health Institute says more than 5,700 indigenous women like Brittany have been reported missing since 2016. And unlike Gabby Petito's case, Tyson says those cases often don't make headlines or garner the same social media response. What are we, chop liver? Social media was huge in Gabby's case. Mike Peasley is a former law enforcement officer turned Tampa area private investigator. He worked on Brittany's case and that of many other missing indigenous women. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, you know, Chinese, indigenous or whatever, the amount of people that are missing and then you take not just the people that are missing and murdered and gone and, you know, the human trafficking aspect of it and stuff, how much attention is being brought to that? Now, both Tyson and Peasley are taking part in a docu-series put together by several groups to raise awareness. Part of that show, that docu-series, is to shed light on MMIW. So not just me. It's not going to be just my sister. It's someone else's sister, someone else's niece. Okay, folks, this is the reason we do this segment every night of the week. Unsolved cases from around the country. If you have any information around this one, uh, please call the Ada Police Department, 580-332-2824, 580-332-2824. Still with me, former commander with the United States Marshals Service, Lenny DePaul, and retired police commander and host of the Profiling Evil podcast, Mike King, and also joining us tonight, the private investigator working on Brittany Tiger's case, Mike Peasley. Uh, great to see everyone. Mike, can you fill us in? Is, it, is there a person of interest? Are there leads in this case? Absolutely. Um, when I went out to Oklahoma, out at Ada, um, I went to where they found Brittany, and then I did went back to the police department, which I found unbelievable. They were closed. Um, we started, I started the investigation where Brittany and her husband were living. Um, it was really interesting when I got a copy of that police report, um, they had an opportunity to bring the husband in at that point. He was out on federal probation and for whatever reason, they elected not to do anything with it at that time. I also found a witness out there that lived in the same apartment complex who told me that the night that she went missing, that she took and um, he witnessed the husband, William, and another person who we believe now, um, Bodie Stearns, were carrying a heavy suitcase down to a truck at the same time that she went missing. 
um, and put it in the truck and left. Uh, I, I gave that information to the detective out there and it sort of went nowhere. Uh, with that information, we have leading information coming about now that I have a bombshell witness that has information that I believe that the case is going to be solved here pretty quick once I interview her. And since it's an open case, obviously I'm not giving that information until I interview her. Unbelievable work, Mike. Unbelievable. Uh, Mike King, you know, listening to this, it, it, every case deserves the attention. Every case Oops. deserves the resources that are available. And if a, a department doesn't have the resources, they need to reach out and, and, and get more resources on these cases because we see it can happen. Yeah, I mean, it, w this is perfect example, even using the Gabby Petito cases as a, a corollary to this thing, that small police department pulled together the FBI, the State Bureau of Investigations, the local sheriff's office. There's no reason why that can't be happening somewhere else. And Mike's done a great job in starting to piece this thing together and provide them with information. What a, what a great uh, example of where the private industry can make a huge difference in these kinds of cases. Mike, I, I mean, I was really intrigued by even the fact that the family had reported that uh, Brittany had indicated she was going to leave her husband at some point. Yeah, um, it was interesting at that one point there when the initial officer went out to the house, um, you know, he had the opportunity that night to do something. The husband took in, he made a bunch of statements that I would have brought him in as an ex-law enforcement officer. He said that the phone, she had the phone, the only phone that they had. And during the interview with the husband, a phone rang. And the husband never, the police officer never took that phone. And if nothing else, get a search warrant for it. I mean, you got the phone right there. The other thing that struck me really hard in the investigation that they did was they contacted dispatch. The husband was on federal probation. It says contact federal probation immediately. Apparently the officer got a message from them saying there wasn't any contact uh, to be made. And I said, I can't believe that that even occurred. So with the witness that I spoke to that witnessed all of this, the information that I gave the detective, um, I thought there was gonna be a, a pretty big follow-up. Uh, I told the detective, I'm willing to do anything I can. This family needs closure, period. Um, the detective told me at one point, that William goes, the, the husband, they had PC for his arrest. And yet to this day, there's been no arrest. Then the, the detective told me that they couldn't find him. Well, I found a witness that said, I can take you to the address and show it to you. Well, I not only got the address, but I got the vehicle information and there was still no follow-up. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what their protocol is. I don't know if that's just a small agency. I don't know, you know, why the sheriff's office can get, get involved with this. I don't, I don't know, but uh, I'm not going to stop my investigation until there's some closure with it. Absolutely. Lenny DePaul, I'll give you the final word on this one. Hey, Mike, what's the underlying charge on the federal probation? Uh, any idea what he did? I mean, I, I'm not quite sure why he wasn't violated or at least use that as leverage going into any conversation. Did anybody go down that road at all? I agree with you 100%. He was out on a bank robbery. Oh. Um, <laughs> so he did time. I mean, yeah. yeah. You don't yeah, have to hit me with a ton of bricks. Robbery. Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, like Gabby's case, you know, the biggest thing here is, is there's just social media has a big impact on these cases. And it's, this isn't the only case we're working, but Young Gun Entertainment is doing a, uh, producing a four part docket series on this, on who killed Britney Spears. And, you know, it's important that social media gets out there and, we do something to try to bring Absolutely. Awareness. And, and you know what, Mike? We'll continue to stay on it here. We stay on these cases. We don't do them one and done. Unsolved case files will come back, so you're going to get more calls from us. Mike Peasley, private investigator, thank you so much. 
Uh, Lenny DePaul and Mike King, appreciate your time and expertise as well. Still ahead. Well, what do you think happened to Brittany Tiger? I mean, again, how does someone just disappear and the person closest to her isn't out looking every single day? It would take a month before a farmer found her decomposed body in a field. What a way for her family to find out what her demise was. This is an interesting one, and I'm looking forward to your comments down below about what you think may have happened. If you know something about this case, please say something about it. And from Latvia, thanks for supporting Profiling Evil. Hey, please take a moment, hit that like and the subscribe button, and ring the bell so that you get all of our notifications on, on videos like this one. And uh, we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.